Greetings, my Jamaican youth. This is Big Stone coming to you in a shanty mood, in a shanty pattern, but with a real Jamaican seriousness. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a few scenarios. And I want to ask you to be a participant in this video and kind of explain or help me to understand how could these actions amount to this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we are faced with the high crime, especially in Jamaica, especially uh, the unwanted killing of one human being by another. Some people take it for a fad. Some people love when it happens because they go to a party and they go to church and then they go to a setup on a nine night and it's a money making thing for some people. For some people it's a delphication thing. They don't get a chance to go out but they will allow a funeral or a nine night to go on to pay respect to a loved one. All these things have been happening and growing alarmingly in Jamaica. But I'm gonna to bring to you the reality of this beautiful island that we live on. And I want to talk to you, especially the youngsters, about this. And we're going to use scenarios, ladies and gentlemen, because we don't want to brand a particular community. We're just going to use hypothetical words. The first hypothetical scenario that I'm going to bring to you is that two youngsters who grew up together plan to go up the road and commit an act. They have a misunderstanding with someone up the road. So two brothers left from down the road armed with guns. And when they got up the road, they saw the brother, their intended target. And both of them pulled firearms and fire, killing that brother up the road. They took the gun off that brother up the road. And while coming down the road, now armed with three guns, they ran into the police. A shootout pursued. And guess what? Those two brothers were shot and killed as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the appalling thing about this, and it still troubles me to this day, is that the same mortuary, the same van that pick up dead bodies, that came to pick up the youth that was shot and killed up the road, was the same van that picked up the two youths that police shot and killed down the road, being armed with these weapons. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how did those actions amount to the outcome? You want to tell me that there's no one between the two who was planning this vicious act to go up the road and kill a brother or a friend? They could not have thought this out among themselves and said, listen, if we go up the road and we fire a shot, police might hear us and they might end up in the situation that they ended up in. None of them didn't think about the consequences of their actions. And how could it be, ladies and gentlemen, the same van that picked up the brother that was killed up the road is the same van that is trafficking or taking all three of them to the mall. There's another hypothetical scenario, ladies and gentlemen. This happened in the country parts uh, in Jamaica. A man at about 11 o'clock took a firearm and he went searching for his enemy, so to speak. And at 11 5, he pulled the trigger and shot and killed his enemy. And while making good his escape, ladies and gentlemen, boom, he ran into the police again. A shootout happened and of course, he ended up dead. Look at the consequences of your actions. Look at the consequences. They say karma is a bitch. Karma as payback time. Karma is what goes around, comes around. So why can't we not see our brothers as friends and not enemies? Speaking now to the amount of money that the Minister of National Security has put into fighting crime, it's an alarming amount of money to reassure the Jamaican people that something is being done or something great is about to happen. But ladies and gentlemen, if we address just the, what you call it, the cooling down of any crime and not the starting up of that crime, then you know what is gonna happen, ladies and gentlemen? You have to be cooling down till thy kingdom come. Unless you address 
the hardcore seriousness of what causes some of these youngsters to rebel will ne never ever get to how you're going to solve it. Now ladies and gentlemen, I'm almost 60 years old. Yes, next month I'll be 60. And growing up in Jamaica wasn't easy. It was very poor and hard. And it's still poor and hard. But we're trying our best to survive. And ladies and gentlemen, at no time at all did the thought ever came across my mind to really hurt any of my brothers and sisters up until this day. So what has overcome our youth? What has happened to our youth? Let's be realistic. I think for one, that we as the older folks have failed some of these youngsters miserably because we do not or we did not play our part as the community raising the child like how we were taught. Yes, we have failed them miserably. I have spoken to a lot of elders my age and older and I can understand some of their actions or reactions when I ask them, what have you done for a youngster lately? Some of them would respond to it by saying, for a big stone, them you, they are pure animal, them cannot be tamed. But a big stone, me tired to talk to them and they just don't want to listen. But a big stone, me do my best and them you, they will hurt you if you reach out for them and I try to help them. But what I'm saying is, I understand, but we cannot give up hope. We cannot give up hope because you have to have, you know, get back to the mindset of these youngsters. We know you want to bring them up to your mindset, but we want you now to dig deep into the problem and get into the minds of some of these youths. Proper parenting at home. Children are having children. Children are left at home to take care of children. Young boys not finishing school and young girls not finishing school, so there's a whole bunch of problems. So instead of spending these billions upon billions upon billions of money on fighting crime, get into the mindset, get into the, the communities, get into the, 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 the social aspect of what causes these problems and help these youths. They need help. They need help. The budget to fight crime is billions of dollars. And ladies and gentlemen, if we put a small fraction into work within all these communities, getting youths off the road, getting them involved in, in, in jobs, getting them involved with, with, with schooling, getting them involved with a trade, getting them involved with loving each other, getting them involved with sports, uh, their God-given talent, get them involved. I don't see too much program getting the youths involved. Make that be a national driver. Mr. Minister of National Security, make that a national drive and get the youths them back involved. Jamaica is a beautiful country, man. We understand your frustration, Honorable Minister. We know what you're going through when every time you turn, it's a double murder there, it's a double murder over there, it's a double murder over there. And we know people out there quarantine. We need more, more police officers on the streets. But even if you have millions of police officers on the street and you do not address the core problem. The core problem. Then the outcome is going to be the same or it's even going to get worse. Jamaica, let's get back to when it takes a village to raise a child. Look up and the youth them out there with love and respect. Because you see, if we give the youth them love and respect, then they are forced to love and respect us as elders. Don't bother look on the youth as a child. Nothing good now will come out of him. Don't look on the youth as a boy and can't tame car animal that. Don't look on the youth them them way. Reach out to the youth the Rasta. I see youth, my talk directly to you them. And your mother and father that days, the days can be long. Respect your elders them that you in return can be respected. Remember Big Stone Teller now, we told you this many times, man. Love yourself, love one another, and walk good in a beautiful country. Big Stone love Rasta, but there's a mighty consequences. Actions will have consequences in this pure chaos. Go back to school, you Big Stone.